Beast Mundo. The new one is still good into it as well, but it is going to be Gnar instead. Something very, very standard, and we'll see if they can really try to attack it, because if you are caught in Mini Gnar, if TF gets up there with the Kiana, you can absolutely get burst out, and that is a con sitting on top of another champion. If you make mistakes, this champion falls behind very quickly. And I feel like the range support discussion kind of applies to all EU supports. You know, like Hillisag sure. oh, yeah. on Morgana, oh, Trimby no. on Morgana, no, please, you know, no. it slowly falls apart, but here again, Double range support bot lane. What are they both doing? They're running bot Execute. to get the second bush control. We saw the EDG game. They actually got the level one on the Kai Snort listen to the Yumi lane. And actually Bale's able to shut them down. Sven and Vulcan are running down there to make sure that doesn't happen. Now this is the first time I've seen Nami with Electrocute in competitive play. All the all the ones that have come out in world so far, I think were more like airy style. This is very popular in solo queue though. You know, buff up the Lucian, put the E on him, proc the Electrocute, proc the on hit from the E. The PTA comes through as well from Lucian. There's all these different things. And then you get mandate on Man up, and it's like four things just proc it once and you die. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty insane the amount of bursts that can come through. Normally you feel like Nami has to play at some sort of range where she has to get in a little bit close, maximize the W value, hit a bubble. But with this build, she pushes E on Lucian and does an extra <laughs> 600 damage for free. Now 600 is a made up nice. number, but it's a lot of damage. And just interestingly at bot side, which I think both junglers are going to path into because top lane not too much to play around. I think Odo Amne can get the push if he wants to, but uh, I think bot side is where they want to focus. Hans has cleanse. Now he might look at C9's comp and be like, well, what is he cleansing? A Gnarled? You know, something like this, a Yumi route, but the three combat summoners, Exhaust and Ignite, he wants yeah. to make sure he can take one of those off in the 2v2, so heal doesn't give him as much value uh, as the um, as the cleanse. And I think Lucian in this matchup, because you are at range, you have to be willing to move in aggressively at times to dash forward, and if you're going to commit to some sort of an all-in play, you dash in, you get exhausted, you don't have cleanse for that, you yeah. are going to get roasted, so I think it makes sense, and we'll see if he can get value from it. Yeah, and the Lucian Nami lane obviously spiking at around level 3, of course, when you have the E on Nami, all three spells on Lucian, he can dash in and keep proccing the passive, so I I think Rogue will probably try to dash in when that gets to that. I'm Yumi can do it a little bit earlier on, of course. We'll see how these lanes go. Just kind of waiting, anticipation for the level two, for the battle for level two is for now. Rogue are a little bit ahead, Sven forced to walk away. That an instant electrocute proc. But PTA being proc back, Sven really ready to trade. It's not the double combat. Sven knows some of these trades are going to go a little bit longer, so maximizing that value. And look at Blabber. He did the exact same path as Closer, the fastest level three he can get in the game. Red, Raptors, Grom. Is he going to move towards the bot side and surprise Rogue with a level a level three gank at around two minutes, 30 seconds, which is a very kind of odd timer to get ganked by the jungler because it's like the third wave in the game. So Blabber could run down bot right now. Rogue don't have any vision, and they're trying to crash a wave, or he might just look to full clear because Inspire is full clearing on the opposite side. <laughs> time as the trades go back and forth. Now, for now, Rogue trading a little bit of their health there early on to get some more positive oh. trades and push the wave in, but Ben and Vulcan sitting very comfortably under that tower now and really not too concerned. Yeah. And for now, it looks like Blabber taking his time on the clear will not rush immediately Bob. I mean, you can see how squishy Nami is. You know, that is always one of the risks of playing these types of champions. The one Q hits from Vulcan, the Q auto hits from Sven, loses about half the HP there on Trimby. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to play these matchups fairly aggressively, but positioning errors can be really punished when you are playing enchanters. Yeah, definitely. And we talked about Rogue has the advantage in bot. See, Blabber is just pathing away from there. He's moving to top grab. He knows Inspire is passing bot. And they're going to focus that hands. Just an aggressive early trade. Now, most important for that mana very rapidly, of course, repeated nerfs to how much that E costs on Numi over multiple patches. As Inspired is going to secure bottom crab, Blabber trading the crab on the top side. Yeah, and you saw red team pink there from Blabber. He knows the jungle's bot side, so Sven and Vulcan have to be a little bit careful. There is some kind of dive potential, perhaps, or forcing of TPs that Rogue could fish for if they want, but it looks like Rogue's bot lane's getting the upper hand. Oduamne has top push, which means he can't really stop this crab from dying because uh, Inspired wants to do his Krugs, but he can spot it out, give information to his team, Blabber's top side, which allows mid to kind of play a little bit more safely and a bot to play more aggressive. Uh, so information is what both these teams are looking for. So far, so good. Overall, Rogue keeping the pressure in mid lane. Purse, of course, a few more levels under his belt. Should feel a bit more comfortable. But Hans just constantly leaping forward. Electrocute procs left to right. One more auto. Trimby! Oh, me. oh that was quite. close. They both flashed at the same time, but Sven no flash is going to have to base. Hans was playing with fire a bit there. He doesn't have heal, of course. He's running with cleanse, so if Ignite was dropped, you know, he could cleanse it off, but still getting very aggressive. Almost died. One or two more autos and he was dead too, but they're going to be able to push out and base first. Yeah, it, it's going to draw junglers down there now. No flash on Sven, no flash on Trimby. Both of those are potentially easy kills for Inspired or Blabber if they can get down there. Uh, we'll have to see what the vision is going to look like. You know, the early push going towards Rogue. They're going to have a much better base because this wave crashes. Mm -hmm. Sven misses out on it. Most exchanges. Little Womanek coming out on top of these top trades, but 
On Tom and Trimby feeling pretty good so far. Trimby has to be hitting himself a little bit on the band of that play. Did have Ignite up, and of course, this is a lane that we're naturally going to look towards. You can see Sven not always pulling ahead of the stats, but still a legendary carry in his own right. Does a lot more damage often than Hans Sama. Hans Sama much more about that early game. Yeah, and Sven had his ups and downs in the lane phase against Peace in the best of five. You know, game one obviously dying to be two. Game uh, two, he struggled a little bit. Game three, he was able to come out on top and start diving. So a little bit of inconsistency, but for now it looks okay. Of course, he lost his flash and he's vulnerable to gank, so he has to be careful for that. That's why Blabber down towards his bot side. Double TP is still available for C9, but I think Rogue's composition comes online at level 6. Kiana, TF, Rumble, that's when they'll start forcing, I believe. And this is a composition, the Kiana Rumble that in NA clutch a while ago now, you know, made really, really popular for these team fights. Playing around corridors, playing around terrain is so important with this. If you can get that Kiana stun into the wall, the equalizer layered over top, it is devastating. 2019 meta it was, I believe. Uh, with things like the Kiana jungle. And now both here. junglers are matching each other. C9 trying to crash the wave and Rogue trying to contest it. Rapper waiting. Neither jungler knows the other one is here. Rapper now going to back away. Inspire going to see just the edge of him. Maybe sees a window of opportunity. Trying to bait the play. Inspire waiting in the darkness. Does just have the grass blade equipped, but can hot swap to the water blade and maybe fish for a snare. Is going to opt to back away instead. Can just wait for level hmm. six. Play this one a bit slower. Interesting that they backed off there. Larson had a wave pushed in and he was level six. They could have gone for the 4v3 and collapsed onto Blabber. And Fudge was TPing back top, but they opt out of it for now. Perks obviously has TP to match. So nothing will happen just yet. Very slow early game for now. Yeah, I mean, Blabber was spotted, I believe, walking up in the river, so I was expecting them to go for that type of play, or even for Inspired to try to collapse on his van, who would have been then isolated in that potential 3v2. Perks, though, using that mid lane prio, laying down a little bit of vision, potentially limiting how reliable it's going to be for Larson to surprise the bottom side of the map. And, mm. and I like it, just using that lane prio, getting vision down. You can see not really a lot of vision for Rogue on the map whatsoever. TP back top from Odo, and that'll spell all TPs used apart from Perks's. He's saving the TP. Yes, he's down 10 CS, but that's because he saved his TP. He had to take a bad base because he needs to match Larson's destiny. But like you said, Dracos, look at the vision Rogue, uh, C9 have on the map. Defensive pink on the entrance, uh, aggressive pink on Rogue's entrance, and then they have the deep ward onto their Raptor, so they know where Inspired will be the majority of the time. Again, process of elimination. If he's not bot side, he's top side, so they should know he's on his crab, and he's going to spot get spotted on this, uh, this pink ward here. All right, stepping forward. He'll level up on this as well, so Flapper. Let's be careful. Level six for both. Blabber waiting in the darkness will now get spotted out. Grassblade makes it pretty easy for Inspired to make it out to safety. We'll be able to go invisible and just to dash away from Blabber. And meanwhile, on the top side, Fudge already getting pushed in. So not really a lot of room here for Cloud9 to respond to Inspired moving into their jungle. Yeah, I mean, Blabber just needs to be able to actually defend the potential dive. But they're going to Isolated, trippy. exhausted. Oh, He's getting burned down. Hansama, can you turn this one back? Sven stepping forward, grabbing that first blood. Vulcan still in the area, but the Yumi, can't she finish the job? Oh, it's oh. Camper's solution. One more. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Oh, that is the most embarrassing way to die in League of Legends, and it uh, just happened. I hate that cat. Get it off my screen. <laughs> the Airy Frog takes down Hans, and the 2v2 goes in favor of C9. <laughs> Support will combat there. Vulcan taking him down. Insult to injury. The Flash getting expended. Otto was already in the air, but Cloud9 winning out in that bottom lane. Blabber defends Fudge on that pushing wave. Was concerned about Fudge getting potentially dove with TF able to move. When you're a mini, when you have no TP, you are very vulnerable up there. But Rogue has been laning very well. And you can see, especially in mid lane, you know, a good almost three waves in the advantage of Larson plus the TF passive gold is resulting in them still being up in gold. And I have to say, good play from C9 just because of the window that they went for, right? Inspired, they knew he was topside. Larson was hovering towards top. This was the only real window they had for a straight 2v2. They found it, they came out on top, and now Blabber's pairing with Vulcan. We've seen this, especially in the T1 game with the Talon Yumi. They pair up together and they try to force these 2v2s. And the thing oh, I like Blabber! Is Blabber's still going in, he's gonna get knocked right Blabber. back to the wall. Chain CC immediately now gonna get the follow-up from Larson in the area. Blabber, what are you doing? Vulcan now gonna be sentenced to death as well, as now someone get in the area very rapidly. Right, that, that was that troll. Was, uh, that that was a bit too deep. Blabber. That was absolutely uh, trolling. He really wants that red buff, but again, Inspired and Trimmy were there to match the 2v2. The TF ultimate came out, and he, he should have known about that. Yeah, th that's collapsed on. That's my biggest problem, is that if TF is mid and you think, okay, Perk's gonna interrupt the ultimate or, or something there, then maybe I understand this play, but otherwise it just straight up made no sense. Yeah, here's the 2v2. Inspired's pinged out top side. You can see Perks is going aggressive onto Larson. Hang on, 1v1 on top. Oh, or is it? Stone oh, he got the now coming up, interrupted. 
That was a stolen ultimate. That was Perks's stolen ultimate. But Odawani now fishing for the 1v1. The knockback there, but he's not going to connect to the wall, so he doesn't get the extra damage. Fudge has to be careful here. He can turn mini and try to step away, but he's going to need to land so many boomerangs if he wants to win this. Maybe he can go for the double bounce over Odawani, but he's getting burned. It's a Gnar barbecue. Perks on the way up, though. Should be able to finish this one. Does manage to connect. Instant damage coming in. Perks will finish the job. Larson just canceled it. He canceled Perks' ultimate towards top, so Odo had the 1v1 and was able to trade off. Eventually, Perks does get up there, but look at the amount of plates that Larson yeah. has. I mean, losing farm, losing plates. Labra with a pretty critical error, not only getting himself killed, but also getting Vulcan Ooh, killed. Perks. Inspired, double buff. No ultimate, though, but yes. Alex, he's just going to go for the cancel. No, he wants to go for the full 1v1. He has the challenging smite. Perks has no mana. Can just chase him down, but Perks walking away. Inspired doesn't have quite enough damage yet. And interestingly, I thought that Inspired would run the Conqueror Kiana with the uh, with the Gore Drinker, but no, he has the Electrocute. Maybe it's because C9's comp is a little more squishier. Uh, they don't have too many bruisers, but again, Zinzal Nar. Um, we'll have to see how it pans out anyway, but now Blabber cross-mapping on the bot side of the map. Really interesting scene. Larson just straight up skip boots. Has the Everfrost already completed here. You, know, you almost always see Tier 2 boots rush or TF. People love the move speed there, often the CDR if they don't need the Merc Treads, but uh, already has the mythic completed is going to give him a lot of power and lockdown uh, to potentially find some more kills. Harold started up and Odo Amnate should be able to push in top. Larson's kept the mid push consistent throughout the game because of the matchup, of course. And junglers keep on spawning each other out. Blabber again down towards his bot side. He should know Inspired's on his Herald because of the ward in the pit. We'll see if he can find something on the side of the map. Maybe just a dragon start here uh, for Cloud9. And credit to Inspired starting the Herald as soon as he sees Blabber on the bottom side. Blabber now just going to try to take away what he can, get a few camps. Doesn't feel confident enough to start the Drake. Larson, just a few more seconds until that ulti is going to be back up and available. Curse going to have to wait a little bit longer before he can take it away, but keeping our eyes on the map for now, Rogue holding on to a pretty decent lead. Yeah. Blabber needs to start up this dragon soon if he wants to trade neutrals because they knew Inspired was topside. He took away the enemy Raptors, but that's about it. He's going to cross back to top now, our base. He's had bot push the whole game. Rogue's bot lane base. Perks was able to contest Pryo. There was no TPs, but instead he just opts out of taking that dragon. Of course, free dragon for Cloud9 if they want to commit their resources to it as Hansama and Trimby do back when a wave is crashing into their tower. But instead, they're looking for the reset, looking to get back on the map a little bit faster. Don't want to risk going for that objective when Lucian's going to come back onto the map with items. You can see Hansama now with the Gale Force, ready to get even more up in the face of the Cloud9 bottom lane. Larson just choving right now. Mm -hmm. 122 CS in almost 12 minutes, and Rogue getting a better hand on the top side of the map. C9 off seat, their bot lane's winning. We'll see if they can unlock themselves yeah. a little bit more. I mean, the bot lane's winning, but it's such slim margins compared to what the top side is doing here for Rogue. You know, Rogue is looking much better in these early minutes. The critical mistake really was the invade there from Blabber, and it has put Inspired so far ahead. He has the Gore Drinker, and now they're up towards the top side looking to uh -oh. punish Fudge. Fudge, where is he going to go? Tries to leap out to safety. He has to be careful not to get too close to the tower. He will get knocked back and stunned, but Inspired doesn't look like he has damage quite yet. Trimby, though. Electrocute, flash forward, W, Trimby! Again! Oh, Trimby. I think he wasn't on the same page as Inspired there, because as Inspired W'd over the wall for the gank top, Trimby was running toward that bush on the right-hand side of the screen, so if he was there earlier, I think Fudge was dead, but he was late to the play, so he can't land the chain CC. Now TP coming back from Fudge. Trimby incredibly low, no ultimate whatsoever. Odawamine. Maybe they can try to step forward here, but ulti now being used up by the TF. Stolen away, Keon ultimate, they have to be careful. Hansama getting locked up and taken down under the tower. In the meantime, Trimby spending too long on the top side. And now Cloud9 don't need to do anything up here. You just chill. You have the push yep. on the bot side. You're going to get plates there. You got the dive. So by drawing Larson to that top side, Odo. Perks already has a really successful roam. Here comes Odo. This is so positive for Cloud9. He's going to find them recalling in the bush, though. I think he wins this, but he doesn't have ultimate just yet, so that's probably why he's opting out of the fight. He didn't can't see stepping forward, but Vulcan recognizes the window of opportunity, goes forward with the pop and block. Yeah, Vulcan really just need to, to block the Electro Harpoon, and then there's no way that he could chase him down. So here it is one more time. Ansama walking oh. up, very bold, tries to use the culling to clear out the wave, but just underestimating the amount of damage. You know, there's there's no way you can do that in the face of Cloud9. Yeah, and there's no one to back you up either. He thought he could just take that wave. It's only like 60 to 80, 100 gold there. Uh, but he risks his life, does end up getting punished. Good punish from C9. They knew that guy was alone. And Larson was topside, Odo was topside. And they had the window again to punish in this 2v2. And now, see what this Herald is going to do. Only 30 seconds left until tower plating falls away. Really need to get some pressure here on the top side. Should be able to crash it in just in time for the side of Rogue. But Hansama going down, Trimby falling down, does eliminate some it's of the threat. <laughs> they want to make sure no one is hiding. There's no more sneaky snakes. Well, I just love that Fudge put that pink ward there like five minutes it's ago. Like three. Yeah. <laughs> he stopped him from connecting three. He blocked him. Wow. <laughs> what a play. <laughs> Nolts and crosses. I, I, I like that Rogue is respecting it too. You know, they're not just killing it off to, to yeah, take yeah. A, a cheap win there. 
You gotta win the mini games too, yeah. not just the main game. As a person over to back and forth. <laughs> And this has been a very interesting game. Rogue, of course, holding on to a pretty substantial gold lead, but I don't think either team walks away from this game 100% uh, happy with how some of these early game plays have gone. A lot of fumbles on the side of Rogue, one big fumble from Blabber on the side of C9, and those mistakes can count against you as we get later in the game. It just feels like things are disjointed, you know? Blabber going for that red, Inspired going for that top gank, and Trimby's not in nowhere near, just going for wards. The 2v2, of course, a little bit sloppy from Hans, getting dove and dying in the 2v2 as well. C9 getting up a hand in that lane specifically. And Perk's just kind of been struggling a little bit. He's tried to find a way on the map. You know, he tried to TF top. He did get the kill. He's down 20 CS because he's roaming around so much. But now, C9 are in a 1 3 1. Fudge is top. Perk's is bot. Larson is still mid. So I wonder if he's going to move towards the top side soon to try and match that 3v3 um, when these objectives start to spawn in the next four minutes. I will say, Odo is getting very strong here with Mythic completed, hitting level 11 there for the rank 2 on the ulti. That is terrifying. Inspired still really is a threat on this Kiana, and that combo will be devastating. The ability to also follow up, potentially, or set up for the Kiana ult with the Everfrost. There's so much chain CC here. Nami ult coming across. Lots mm -hmm. of AoE ultimates, lots of AoE CC uh, and abilities for Rogue. So Cloud9 is going to have to be on point with their positioning, especially Sven, who is going to be the clear target in so many of these fights. And I think it's a similar story for both sides in that both teams really want to be first to the objective. They want to be the team yeah. with the setup, because you're looking at Gnar into a stolen Silas ultimate. He can pick Rumble, he can pick Kiana, he can take whoever he wants, it's going to be impactful on top of an MF, on top of a Yumi ult. Both these teams really set up for some crazy Wombo combos, but again, if it goes a little wide, if you miss a little bit, that team fight's going to fall apart so quick. And here it is from Rogue, the one through one match. Larson's moved towards top side, the one through one from both teams coming in. It's all about contesting midway, getting the mid push and moving to the side first. That's why C9 are stepping up and Rogue are here to match. And multi goes in for Nami, but not going to connect whatsoever. And Rogue just going to get a little bit of mid prior here. Sven does not really forced to back away and it's just going to even this out. Trimby kind of looking uncomfortable on the Nami, I have to say. You know, this is one of those situations where... Sven? Oh, does have a wrap around the here. He's going to red card because Sven has cleanse. Goes in, gets the snare. Thumbs up. There's a lot of thumbs up today. It is the meta. It's it is the, but it's th also it's a thumbs up meta, for sure. Yeah. But it's loads of different thumbs up. You know, Scout approved the thumbs up, the Remus one, you know. Mm -hmm. Different angles chosen. And Larson. Could have gold carded to get Sven's cleanse, but wanted the red card because then Sven might have cleanse and there's some kind of kill pressure. So you see uh, Rogue was just too far away for that one. And I do want to go back to what you talked about there, Zeo. I think Trimby is the youngest member of this team. And ultimately he's had really solid sparks to split and he's had parts where in this first playoffs he was maybe a little bit too communicative. Mm -hmm. The team talked very publicly about it. He was a little too eager. He got a little too caught up in the moment and maybe relayed not the most important information. And now, you know, his first games on the world stage, not surprising to see a little bit of jitters here, but he is a player who has recovered well in the past and have to see if this game is where we're going to see that. Absolutely. I mean, Nami is one of those champions that I think it's so easy to get baited into throwing your ult as a type of engage, but it's so easy to sidestep because it's very, very slow. So unless you really have your opponents pinned or you're following up on something, uh, the ultimate just is not reliable as engage. You know, especially against someone like MF who can get the Yumi speed boost, who has strut. You have so much move speed to simply walk out of it. Yeah, and you can see there. Larson TP bot to take over bot from Odo so he can move mid. Maybe Rogue wanna siege this mid tower here and Larson can pop the ult because they, now they can force maybe. You not know, only have three members mid, and that's gonna force Sven to ult the mid wave. TP coming in from Perks. Backing off, they're getting a lot of space here. Now traded back. Perks now gonna try to leap out to safety. Good ult comes in from Trivi this time. Perfect chain CC. Just getting caught on the edge there by Sven. One more auto. Hot Zombie gonna take the kill. Barely getting clipped by that Kiana ult, but it's gonna cost him his life. Yeah, small blunder there from C9. Actually a big blunder. Two kills over to Rogue and they're gonna get this mid tower. Sven could have just cleared the wave with ultimate, but Perks fancy the fight. Fudge didn't TP in with him, so it was just a 4v4, and he just gets caught out by the bubble and dies. Yeah, I mean, really a 5v4, because Larson ulted in immediately, mm -hmm. so Perks had no ability to actually follow forward after he ults in, after he arrives with that TP. He just had to try to flash out. Larson arrives, he gets burst down immediately, and there was just no real need to take this fight here. Yeah, Sven was fine. He's cleared the wave. Blabber did as well, but they only start to move forward because Perks is TPing. Like you said, Larson matches instantly and stuns him up. The bubble connects, uh, and Perks dies. And this is one of those situations where if Cloud9 can defend four rogue members with three, as they did by clearing out the ulti, then you're getting more on the rest of the map. You're getting the farm down, and Sven knows that's a critical mistake. They're already falling behind. And really, that mistake mid, as well as the blabber invade costing them two kills, those were two very, very costly errors from Cloud9, because Rogus is going to make the most of those advantages. It was indeed. Now Blabber is hovering both sides, but pushing in Odo. And Larson lost that TP and doesn't have ultimate just yet, so he's gonna push in top. Rogue probably gonna play a little bit slower now. C9 had good mid control, but because of this play, now they lost the tower. Hands can do things like this. Only coming out, inspired. 
Hovering in the area, not entirely sure if he wants to commit to that one, will back away. But this looking a lot like the rogue that EU fans saw in the regular season. Building up a gold lead, steadily advancing here now with these big advantages across the map. Using the Herald topside, can grab another 650 pretty easily. Question is, is Rogue time gonna rear its head again? Everyone's nervous, everyone's sweating, because right when Rogue seemed the most in control, the most in the driver's seat, <laughs> that's when they die on side lanes. That's when they lose objectives. So, might not be the case this time, though, because Larson's going straight in. Ulti gonna come out instant CC, no room for spend and maneuver. And on the backside, Perks, you get Keon Alta denied access to the fight, but has a Keon Alt of his own. Yeah, Sven had no cleanse, and Larson has so much chain CC. You know, the stun card into the Everfrost, into the tidal wave. Sven just can't move, man. So they're gonna get the dragon in the end. That's gonna be the only trade off you expect, unless C9 wants to try to contest. The Keon Alt popped. Oh, he's gonna hit Trimby. Trimby immediately gonna get burst down. No, managing to live for now. Trimby now walking away as Odomine pushes forward. So much damage coming in from this rumble. Vulcan, Perk, Spudge, all in the retreat. But there's the equalizer. Larson coming in with the gold card from downtown. Everfrost not quite going to connect, but Rogue will grab not only the dragon, a few extra kills to boot. Oda Wamne doesn't mind a 1v1 versus Fudge. Even Meganar not enough to dissuade him. Rogue are just running away with it at this point. They are playing so well around these corridors, and Cloud9 so far behind. I mean, Blabber goes in, immediately dies. Yeah, but I feel like the team that pulls the trigger first is the one that's losing. Yeah. Every single time C9 or Rogue make a play, the other team kind of comes out on top. And I mean, again, it's, it's one of those situations where your AD is already dead, so why are you trying to go for the follow-up play? Cloud9 is picking fights, yep. and their fight selection plagued them in play-ins as well. They're choosing to opt into these fights, but they have no need to force. All the Rogue members are out on the map, your AD is dead, and you're trying to go in for this type of play. Even if you kill Trimby there, the turnaround is still going to be successful for Rogue. And we saw this even in their wins in play-ins, where they chose Herald fights 4v5. We saw this in their loss in the tiebreaker to DFM, you know, trying to hard engage when they could have just taken soul for free. Yeah. And this is something that's plagued them all year long. You're, you're completely right there. Good reference, especially the DFM game. Yeah, I remember that clearly while Vulcan was going for the Amumu going forwards. And again, we saw it here. So Dragon taken for Rogue. It's only going to be one Dragon apiece, so around 15 minutes until we see a soul on either side. But Rogue have a really strong 1-3-1 one -one comp with TF to play around the side lanes and Spires. Bit of a whiff there. Fudge still taking a ton of damage. But again, this is massive for Rogue because we talked so much about how key, how crucial setup is in this game. And when you have this kind of gold lead, you're gonna have advantage across the map. You're gonna be able to get set up first. It makes it so much harder for C9 to play. And I also say, you know, set up the early games are actually really important in this group, you know, not just even in this game. When you're looking at Cloud9 and Rogue, they are by far the underdogs in this group. You know, they're put with this Herculean task of, of overcoming some of the best teams in the world. And you have to think, to make some of that magic happen, you probably have to 2-0 your opponent in this yeah. game. Because if, if Rogue comes out with the win here against Cloud9, they beat them again, they beat one team in an upset game, all of a sudden you have a tiebreaker, all of a sudden you have some sort of way to get out of the group. So what you're saying, Azale, is NA and EU have to work together to get out of this group. <laughs> Whoever wins this game, they have to win the next one, and the loser has to beat Damon or FPX to force some exactly. kind of side We have to work together. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when We must you're unite to, the it, West it, it, to beat the best. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's like when you're supposed to be playing a solo BR, but you're in heads, comms with your friend, and you meet, and you group up, and you just... <laughs> that's, that's what we have to take. That's what we have to resort to. For now, though, it's uh, it's rivalries. It's all guns drawn on each other. EU versus NA. 43k to 35. Trimby walking forward, doesn't have to be too scared because he has Hansama behind him, but in general, been uh, recovering nicely after what was a difficult early game was pretty clutch in their life. I think the big question is, how does Rogue progress the game in a sense, right? They have 1-3-1, one one, but they don't have great Baron. Yes, they have damage, but no one can really tank it. They have a Nami for sustain, but they need to find picks over side lane. Larson needs to push top and Shadow Odo Amne, dive Fudge on the side lane, maybe ult mid like we saw him do onto Sven and force out his sums and make a catch or push in mid and move to the side lane as three men to make a four man siege. And one of the ways I really like to progress comps like this is just take over a third quadrant of the map, farm three areas of the jungle. If your opponents can test you and you have rumbled Kiana, fighting in the jungle is such a doomed situation. There's so many walls, so many crevices where you can set up that combo and you know, Rogue can slowly get a greater and greater lead just by taking away these camps, extending their advantages. You can see them playing for tempo. Larson bases, TP's top, keeps top pushing. You know, Rogue got bot tower, now they're gonna push in mid and move towards top, maybe force this red buff fight. Larson has ult to join the fight. He has he has exhaust as well, so Odwamne's behind them. Blabber to go in, that's the knock, that's knockback, that's the shutdown, a clean combo coming in from C9. Blabber now running forward, he has the ulti to body block anything that he needs to. Perks on the front line, has the Nami ultimate, he's throwing it out, but it's still a bad engage, whether it's the Nami that throws it or the Silas. They're not going to find the purchase there, but now immediately the bubble does land. Equalize on the backside, will not connect. C9, maybe. They can turn this fight back. For now, they're going to try to fight for the blue buff. Odawamne will take that one away. It is, in the end, just inspired going down, but C9 priority access to the Baron if they want it. Yeah, good pick. They get the bounty. They're not going to really be able to get anything more. Uh, 
Uh, but Inspire just playing kind of very cocky, playing in the face of their opponents. They go for the hard engage. They have Sven there with the ultimate to follow up. And really well played by Blabber. What he did was he queued one the red, Q2, saved the Q3 knockup, the and then knockout. Eid knocked him up with an MF ult, so they had the burst to take down Inspire. Good play there. Gets a shutdown over to Sven. So, signs of life coming out of C9, defending their vision. We saw this from 100 Thieves against EDG when they overcommit and they overstep, punish them. Certainly. And I think the good news for C9 is we're obviously none of us are fans of the J4 pick. But I think in general, the Zen staying relatively even in his goal, staying close in gold for a lot of the early game. Yes, he is falling behind now, but the power of that all close is relative, you know. Down. Two so thousand I think, down. I think the thing that's important is the, there's Zen and the observer this. really sold you out. You know, you yeah, could you could have yeah. just said whatever you wanted to, but then, then they it, tabbed over. That's true. And I your lies were exposed. Anything. That's yeah. true. What I meant was, see, there's Zen, and I forgot that Zen and Yumi aren't attached together at the hip. So when you combine those two champions together, there's not so much of a gold deficit. Mm. So as long as you do that, like a fusion. Yeah. 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 Polymerization. There you go. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's like as long it's as Blabber doesn't out. take him on a one-way trip, you know. Yeah. Well, we've, you know, I'm actually impressed the Vulcans held on to the trust. That's true team teamwork there. Well, we'll see how that goes later on because I think Blabber's building towards Asterix, But you're right. Like it sends out Yumi. Any Bruiserish or Assassin champion with a Yumi is scary. Sven might be caught out here. He's gonna be in trouble here. Gold card though, not yes. quite enough range. Leaping backwards and just deleting the wave. Just stared out, shooting at each other there with the MF and Lucian ult. But the tower does fall. Rogue gets all Alter Towers. Six towers to nil. They have so much control of the map. Now it's just about closing the game out, getting these new objectives and not making a mistake. We'll see if Rogue do overextend and see if C9 can punish them. All it takes is one good engage from Rogue. You instantly get a Baron or a major objective. Cloud9 have to be very careful here. Perks maybe looking to find an engage of his own. He's taking away the key on ultimate. Flaver still poking. Sven still laying down as much poke as they can. Khan's taking a little bit of damage, and Fudge is backing off. He did just turn Mega. He's going to have to wait 15 seconds before he can stack that Rage again. Sven just continuing to step forward, continuing to poke. He is going to get caught out. Oda Wamde now leaping forward. Vulcan trying to body block the first Harpoon. Will back away. But that's going to be the cleanse, so now Sven cannot walk up whatsoever. I feel like C9 was threatening Midwave there to maybe rush Nash if Rogue overcommitted to Dragon, so Rogue stayed around to make sure that wasn't the case. They get the cleanse out of Sven, now that means for the next couple minutes, Larsen can ult from side lane into mid yeah. and catch Sven out again, so he has to be very, very careful about that kind of play. Hurts. Not quite connecting on the Abscon Duck there. Cloud9 just going to clear out the Baron Vision, make sure that this is a threat if that is something they want to go for. Can either bait them into a dark pit or try to go for the full complete on the Baron. Still difficult, obviously, at this point of the game, but not impossible. Yeah, Cloud9 really hasn't been able to get Fudge involved in the game whatsoever either. You know, he's been kind of stuck answering the waves that are being pushed out by Rogue. Rogue has controlled Vision. He has basically had to sit back, wait for the wave to come to him, always respond. And it makes it very difficult to actually make any proactive plays from that spot. And I think that's somewhat of the reason that Cloud9 is getting into these situations where they're finding themselves frustrated, they're overforcing on engages, and they're picking fights that they're not necessarily prepared for. And if you look at last game, the way TL played around TF is what they would do is match their solo laners together. You know, Jensen and Alfari would hold hands in one lane, push that lane out, and try to force some kind of tower. So maybe C9 could learn from that game and try to do something similar. You know, Perks moving down towards bots with Fudge, try to get Oda Wamle down with some kind of engage, and then double TP to Nash if Rogue started. I think that's the only realistic play they have. Unless they want to just try and group up and force. The thing is, you have no towers. So now Rogue can slow chase you down. Look Coming Larson's in. going. Sven again isolated, but the rest of the team is on the way forward. Inspired, waiting in the darkness, will be spotted up in the ward, but they're being herded Bucky right now. Trying to be the ulti from downtown, but they can't see it coming immediately. The follow-up is there! That's a wombo combo! Sven burned. Perks, the Yumi strapped to his back. Will it be enough to get oh, anything fudge. done? Fudge! That's not where you want to be. Not enough time to stack the rage either. This is going to be a difficult one. Instantly knocked out. Double that kill for Han Sama. TP was so late. Yeah. Like, why even bother at that point? I mean, not that it really would have made a difference. Rogue has completely run away with this game. They're going to get the Baron. They're already 10k up. It's a slaughter. And this one's pretty much all done. Yeah, C9 kind of looked for a pick on the top side of the map, but the second Rogue saw them on the wall, they were like, wait, these guys have no tier twos. They're on the wrong side of the river, boys. And they're just going to collapse onto them. Sven was isolated because we talked about the Yumi and Sinzar pairing and had no cleanse in the new Axe Effect replay. Larson tried to gap close him with the rapid fire using the barrier uh, with the Nimbus Cloak, but it didn't actually work. And then Rogue Inspire just gets the ultimate. Fudge, like you said, uh, Azale, he's just kind of waiting in mid. Yeah. His whole team's dead, and now he TPs in. I mean, I feel like it's one of those situations where as the top laner, you kind of know that the fight's doomed. Like, guys? But but then at that point, the game is over if you die, if your team dies there. So you may as well just insta TP and pray something can happen. Um, you know, th it just wasn't a very well-organized play, and that's, that's honestly been Cloud9's downfall in this game. It's been a number of plays that were kind of ill-conceived from the start. 
there, it didn't really matter what the execution was because you're choosing 4v5s. You're choosing to pick fights where Rogue is stronger, where Rogue is already Oh, prepared. there could be a pick. However, uh, going in, big damage again, but is it going to be enough? It's fire just barely getting cut down, but Odawanger now leaping in and trying to make him burn. Blabber's still alive, still taking the power. The ult might be enough. Rogue, have they thrown it away? Hansama now running, dashing, but that strut is coming in. Hansama running for the hills. The Prowling Drift will fade away, but spend a lot oh, of Hans. damage. Not nearly enough, however. Now the rest of the team collapsing in. Fudge going to try to cut down Trimmy. One, two, three. Doesn't even need the third stack on the hyper, but Cloud9 signs of life as they push forward here. Might not be able to get anything else, but they've slowed down the Baron. Yeah, three picks and a lot of shutdowns. And like Cedric, they've slowed down the Baron. Look at this side waves. 4C9, so much gold sitting on them in the top wave and the bot wave. Now they've got three shutdowns as well. They can start to catch these. Rogue, it's looking a bit hairy. They go a bit too deep, and uh, Larson's not there. He doesn't have TF ultimate up just yet. Inspired gets a bit... Uh, Goes a bit too deep, yeah. gets collapsed on, exact same thing that happened earlier on. Yeah, th this initial engage was very good there from Cloud9. Honestly, the, the kill from Hans was critical, because I think if Hans dies here, Cloud9 goes Baron, right? But because, uh, excuse me, like, they slow the Baron and, and take mid tier 1, take more from this, completely stopping the Baron, but instead, Hans turns around, he already had the IE, absolutely blew up Sven. And able to stop really most of what Cloud9 can get done there in their tracks. It's still a 10k gold lead, but Rogue have lost the Baron. That's the important thing, right? There's only one yeah. minute left on the Baron. They don't have any waves to play on, so they can't really siege these tier 3. So I think Rogue are going to have to default to a 1 3 1 again, secure the Dragon, and the game's going to slow down, which is exactly what C9 wants. And again, I think the, the only healing reduction we see right now is on Trimby. And usually that is more than enough, but a Cloud9 can find a pick. Blabber with Vulcan attached to him, you know, still very, very strong. Similar story of Perks is there as well. There are windows of opportunity. There are things that Cloud9 can do. But again, 10k gold lead, very, very difficult to come back from. Are they trying to contest this dragon? They have no tier 2s on side lanes. Both waves are going to get pushed in, in mid and bot. They were fishing a little bit there, getting some pings down, but eventually they're going to back off. Problem yeah. is... If you make one mistake and a TF gets to all isolate a single member, the game feels like it's over for Cloud9. So it's high stakes even walking forward to potentially contest. It absolutely is. I mean, when you have the Lich Bane done plus the Rapid Fire, like the gold card alone does so much damage. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if Nami puts an E on Larson and he gets a gold card on Sven, that's giving most of his HP just gone. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think there's a lot of spikes for C9 that they're waiting mm -hmm. for. Perks for the Rabidon's death cap, Fudge trying to build towards that Terex. You know, they can play it out a little bit slower to wait for these three, four item spikes and maybe they have a chance. Oh, leaving forward. Big damage on the Sven. Oh. They're just going to cut him down. Larson going to finish the job on that one. Wild cards to close it out. Now they're just breaking down the base. Cloud9 not going to get an opportunity to contest whatsoever. Rogue still sitting on most of their ultimates, too. So impossible for Cloud9 to step up. Yeah, Rogue have a bot, la wait, well, bot wave as well. So they're going to push in mid, take the inip. Push in bot, take the inip. Perks knows even if he's there, he can't stop the push. So he's going to get a top tier one, but that's going to crack open the base. I will say I'm surprised Bobber didn't just step in front, pop the ulti, do something to try to keep Sven alive, but he just went down that quick. And now Rogue pushing here oh, for the end. Looks like the they're gonna combo. get it. Big damage across the board. Blabber goes golden, just buys a little bit of time, leaps right into the face of Han Salman, and goes down anyway. Perks, stolen ultimate. Does not look like they can contest this one. Fudge maybe hoping, maybe praying for a Mega Mega Gnar, but it will not be enough. Towers falling left and right. Rogue will take this one with confidence. 13k gold lead. Rogue putting a win on the board for the LEC. And C9, if you... Those mistakes were just...